Welcome to the back of the cab talk. Coming up, we got a good week on Ryan Kev. Thanks for watching. What's going on, guys? So, got a little space here between the camera. I've noticed in my last couple of videos, I've kind of been in your face, and uh, I don't want that. So, things are things are going really good. But after these last couple days, it's definitely time for the second half of what I love about trucking with what I hate about trucking. Oh man, we've been rolling. I told you, nothing to change. That's, uh, I'm almost on a schedule. Like I said, it's Texas dedicated, but I'm kind of getting, now I'm getting used to things. Now I'm kind of getting my wits about me and just kind of having some fun with it now because I kind of know where I'm going. I don't jump in front of, of the planner and, and head out, but... Uh, just because I'm having a good time, just because I'm doing good, and just because life's great, that don't mean it's always peaches and creams, man. It's uh, been uh, a struggle, and that's how you know you love your job, by the way, is when it's a struggle and it don't even bother you anymore. It's kind of like, yep, I'm used to it. Yep, what am I doing? Go do something else? I love what I'm doing. So let's uh, continue that with the five things I hate about trucking. And I'm gonna preface that when I say this, by the way, I don't hate anything about trucking, but these are five things that can definitely get on your nerves. That's for dadgum sure. So number five, a couple of these are kind of like two categories. So I'm just going to combine them together and I'm just going to call this number five, other drivers, other drivers. And that can be other truck drivers who don't show patience or uh, give a couple of good examples. So two weeks ago, I'm delivering to a, uh, a spot and there's a TMC driver behind me. Got loaded after I did. And I roll up and I'm at the red light, I'm about to make a right turn into uh, where we're delivering. He sees that I'm at the red light, goes through the parking lot next to it and pulls up in front of me and parks in front of me and gets unloaded first. I get to another customer and they say park cross street don't block our driveways and don't block the fire hydrant so there's just one truck there i pull up and i see the fire hydrant and i can't fit behind that other truck and not block the fire hydrant so i back off the fire hydrant and do the right thing wake up the next morning and another truck has pulled in front of me and parked i'm like okay well he, he must have just had parking it'll be good we on top of that wave to come in and he goes rolling in in front of me another tmc driver at that or you'll be delivering a load somewhere and i've seen other truck drivers talk about this and i was at uh, a distribution center i'll say that and i was delivering and i parked out in the middle of the yard so i had room and i untarped unstrapped unbundies under the whole load ready while four drivers sat bobtail watching me work waiting on their loads other drivers not always going to help you that's why it's so important for me to help other drivers you're gonna run into that. There is a lot of, uh, they used to, the Marine Corps called it Spread Corps. You know, it was the spirit of the Corps and helping each other out. And so the funny thing we would always say was a spree to me. You know, they make street signs for people, they say one way. And a lot of one way drivers out here. And you, you can let that, that can get on your nerves. People out here know that TMC is slow. They know we're at 62 miles an hour. But other drivers are 65, 62. A lot of companies are 65. And you get those unrestricted guys and, and they can be kind of rough on you. Or you'll do the right thing. You'll love this one when you get out here, even no matter what your speed limit is. You'll see a car merging, so you'll get over in the left lane. And then they'll get next to you and they won't pass you. And, they won't and you're hung out in the left lane and everybody behind you, body behind the left lane going, why is TMC in the left lane? And all you were doing was the right thing, letting the guy merge. You didn't want to have to hit your brakes. You'll have fun with that, um, which brings in the other half, and those other drivers are also four-wheelers. They have never ridden in a big truck. They have never driven a big truck. They have no idea what you're going to go through, and it shows. Cutting you off, brake checks, on their cell phones. amazing how many people drive, and you will see on their cell phones when you look at them. Or, everybody now knows, most new cars have daytime running lights. And these jack wagons have been driving around, they can see because they're daytime running lights and they don't have any tail lights. And if you're not paying attention for them, you got to watch out out here. And so other drivers are definitely something you can learn to hate out here. 
All right, so I showed them some love. Now I gotta show them a little bit of hate. Hold on, let me fix this so I'm straight. That's gonna be shippers and receivers. You can learn to hate them very quickly. Because I've told you, you're not their priority. Their priority is them. So when you get that load screen that says, is there parking? And it says, yes, there's parking. What that means is you're not in the way. They're ready for you to be there. So guess what? They'll get to you when they get to you. They know they got two hours if they have you get day detention and they know they can unload you in 15 minutes. So it says they start unloading at seven and at 840 they pull you in and you're unloaded by nine. You don't get detention, but you've been there for two hours. That's <laughs> where working your clock can come huge, man. Cause like I said, you're not the priority. So you've got to be able to find a way to cope with that one place I went to. I told you it took them two and a half hours so they didn't pay attention just to get me in. Another 30 minutes to load me, and then I got 45 minutes to strap tarp and bungee and get out of their way. Because once they go to unload you, you're in their way now. Now you're the priority. Until then, you're not the priority. And so it can be wearisome on you, man. It can just be like oh, what you see people sitting around drinking coffee on their cell phones on the forklifts, and it'll drive you back crazy out here. You can really get on your nerves. So shippers and consignees are, they get the love, but boy, they can contribute to some hate. All right, number three, lack of time. There is never enough time in the day, whether you're home, whether you're driving, because we're so worried about our clocks and so worried about got to get somewhere on time because customers got pickup hours, customers got drop time, because traffic, you got to get the truck washed, you got to get fuel, you got to wash yourself, you got to try and find something to eat if you don't have it on the truck. You are always behind i mean today was a perfect example some things didn't go right so i should have had a very easy day i will back that up i was supposed to deliver last night then i was going to wake up this morning be where i was going to load lab my load and drive five hours i was going to get the truck washed i was going to get a shower i was going to get time to make another video during the day except i got there last night and the appointment we thought we had, not a TMC thing, the customer had messed something up and we didn't have an appointment. So I had to get that straightened out this morning and then I had to get put back in the line to get unloaded. And then by the time I got unloaded, my preload wasn't ready for an hour and a half after it was supposed to be. And then it took forever to tarp. And then I hit traffic at four different places. And so I ended up getting here at 8.30 at night with no truck wash, no shower, eating the last scraps of my food for the week because tomorrow we go home and it just doesn't seem like there's enough time because then tomorrow I gotta hurry up and try and get unloaded so I can go get loaded so that I can get home. So your 14 hours goes by so fast, especially like I said, especially on Texas Dedicated because it's typically trying to get somewhere to get parked up. You're not trying to stop at a truck stop. You don't have that kind of time, but it's the same thing on your weekends. Whether you get two full days like I'm getting or you get a day and a half or you only get 34 hours, you got 34 hours to get everything done you gotta do while you're at home. And that I means you've got to be super organized because it just always seems like I'm running out of time. It's like, I, I would love to do more videos. I need to do more videos, but I don't have time. Or I need to call this person. I want to call that person. And a couple of guys, buddies that I've lost contact with, or I get an email. It just never seems like there's enough time. And so the lack of time out here, you've got to get your organization skills because you're always not going to have time. That's always going to be a thing. But if you're unorganized, it's going to be 10 times worse. If you don't know how to run your clock, it's going to be 10 times worse. So you can be hating life because you're always behind and never have enough time. So definitely time is number three. Number two, that's missing the family. And that's all family. That's not just wife, kids. That's brother, sister, mother, uncle, cousin. You don't have time. You, you just never feel like you have time. You have to make time. But man, it gets lonely out here. It gets lonely trying to find something on TV, trying to find, again, like I said, you want to find somebody to talk to, but you're tired or you're driving during the day and the world's out. You feel like sometimes like the world's out there passing you by and it just can be a very lonesome feeling. Now, thank God we have the technology we had. Because I mean, you think back to the old, to, for, for me, the olden days was no cell phones. I mean, imagine with some people, you know, landlines, you know, and pay phones and all that and truck drivers, imagine what their life used to be. I, I don't think I could do it. Those those 
guys that were trucking back in the 70s and 80s, they they were the real truckers. We were spoiled with all Bluetooth headsets and GPSs and all that kind of stuff. We were spoiled, but even then, it still gets so lonely out here sometimes. And it's like beautiful scenery and there's nobody to share it with. So I've got the forms to get my kids on the truck because, uh, you know, I'm well into my 90 days, but just with stuff going on at home, it's hard to just yank one kid out and leave the other kids behind. But we're going to get the kids out here on the road. I'll get my social media director. This is my daughter out here on the road get some better videos for you some better footage but uh loneliness man it's a real thing you need to make sure you're taking care of your mental state back home because uh it can get worse and it can eat you up so you focus on that is one of the big things so and i'm not going to pause because i know what number one is the number one thing that i hate about trucking and this is whether it's slow whether it's busy is boredom i get so bored out here sometimes especially at night if you can't sleep or especially if you're waiting to get loaded or you're waiting for your trailer or you're, you're waiting for your clock to reset or you're taking your 30 you can only play tune blast and surf the internet and so much facebook and instagram and youtube like, like i said i turned the radio off because i've heard every song a thousand times and trial is i'm not a book guy I, there's books that interest me but trying to go through all the process of books and like i said i listen to uh that I've talked about I have tinnitus sometimes and then so one of the things that I do with I snore my wife snores whatever it is what it is is I turn the podcast on at night to go to sleep just to kind of get me to decompress that's actually what I do as a podcast so you got to find ways to keep yourself entertained whether it's like I said when you can talk on the phone talk on the phone or a whole variety of games but even that gets played out and boredom is just oh you know, why are truck drivers so fat? It's because nothing else to do but eat sometimes. There's, I catch myself snacking sometimes. Like, I have nothing to do. I, I've done that. I'll just eat something. You know, and, and it's not like you, know, you can get out and go run around your truck and get exercise because you're waiting in line to get loaded. Or, you know, you've got to watch your clock. Or the customer, you're waiting on the customer. Or you're waiting on your next load. So it's like, man, my preload trailer should have been out here at 10 and it's 1045. So I can't really go in the sleeper and decompress and relax. i got to sit here and just wait. You know, just looking for a trailer and boredom. Oh, yeah. So, that is the number one thing I hate about trucking is being bored. I'm a mental guy. I'm always going. I'm organizing things. But that just wears me out. Because you're out here by yourself. At a shipper that don't care. At a truck driver that just cut you off. While you miss your family bored in tears. It all ties in together to the big circle. But you know what? Wouldn't trade it for the world. Because I don't hate anything about trucking. Um, there's some things I'd like to change. <laughs> there's some things that I may change one day. But uh, uh, I love what I do. I do. And I told my wife that the other day when she was going to take me to uh, take me to my truck. I was like, I hate being away from the family. And I hate being bored. But for some reason, even though I've tried to find ways out of it, when I turn that key, I'm happy. So, share your reasons why you hate trucking in the comments below. Uh, keep sharing the reasons why you hate TMC in the comments below. I don't, I don't censor that. Um, whoever my my, my to, uh, head thumbs down to my thumbs down patrol. The two of you are still going strong, so I expect to see those again this week. So, hey, they love you, hate you. At least they're talking about you, right? So, God bless. Let's get rolling.